On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Carl continues showing us Poly, which is a way we can control for transient errors in our apps. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and this is part two of our look at Poly, which is a tool that gives us the ability to handle transient errors. So you have services in the cloud talking to each other, they fail, how do you handle that? And we're going to continue with Carl Franklin. And hi, hey Carl. Hey. In part one, uh, we did an overview of Poly. What's the issue it's trying to solve? And we started looking at how it works. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to pick up where we left off in this episode. That's right. So if you don't know what this is, go back and watch the last episode. But uh, the the short answer is Poly is an open source project that my company Appy Next took over and uh, enhanced, it's now in the .NET Foundation. Uh, it is also part of .NET Core. If you use the HTTP client factory, you can configure policies automatically with that. And also it's very popular. It's getting about 150,000 downloads a day. So uh, it's good, it's clean, a lot of people use it. And uh, in the last episode, I did three demos. Now we're moving on to the next one, which is wait and retry a number of times with enough retries. The last demo we had wait and retry three times with a 200 millisecond delay in between each retry. And now we're going to retry number of times with enough retries so that it actually works. And so again, <laughs> so, we've, we're making a call, which is always gonna fail but yeah. the policy gives us the ability to specify what to do about it other right. than sit there forever and don't provide any information yeah. versus try a number of times, wait and retry. So this Whatever. is really, you've, you've got an error, a service isn't talking to another service and yep. you're setting up policies to say, well, what am I gonna do about it automatically? Exactly, so we're calling this web API where we're passing a value, we're getting a reply with that value back, but it's programmed to fail after the fourth request within a five second window. Okay. So uh, the third one through three, request one through three within five seconds, they work. After that, they don't. So what we're doing here is we're using a wait and retry async policy, handling all exceptions. And of course we can be specific about the exceptions mm -hmm. we wanna handle. Uh, we're gonna retry 20 times and every time Every time there's a retry, we're gonna wait 200 milliseconds. And this is what happens uh, in between those retries. So this is sort of a new exception handler, tell the user what they won. <laughs> it's, uh, mm. So we're basically uh, showing in a console application those messages in yellow. So again, the last demo we did, this number was three. We were waiting three times and it was failing. Now we're waiting 20 times and uh, it will succeed after 20 retries because that's enough time to cover it. So essentially oh, what's gonna happen is we okay. just make an HTTP request and you know we wait for a while and then it comes back that it worked. So in the right. previous examples, we never saw four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They just never came back, right? That's right, yeah. Now we're waiting long enough and retrying long enough that they eventually succeed. Right, and again, this code isn't prescriptive. This isn't saying this is what you should do. Sure. We're just exercising all the different policies so that you can get a handle on what they do and how they mm -hmm. behave. All right, so the next one is wait and retry forever. Now, why would you do that? I mean, what? <laughs> that's asking for trouble, don't you think? <laughs> However, no. there, there is a really good use case for this one, and it's just wait and retry forever async 200 milliseconds between each one. I was actually writing a WPF app that was sort of like a wizard. And in one page, you were gathering data from a device. It was a Connect, actually, a Microsoft Connect. Uh -huh. And in the next, you know, when you hit next, it took all that data and submitted it to an API in the cloud. And then it couldn't actually go to the next part of the wizard until we got a response from that server that had the magic numbers in the results because it had some yeah. kind of you know magic sauce that it did. The application could not 
continue. Like there is nothing you can do in this application until we get a response. So wait and retry forever is good. And, and you know, we're basically putting up a thing that says, you know, retrying. And if it doesn't work, check your internet connection and just come back later. We were saving right. the state of it so we could just go back in and run it and it would take, it would pick up. But, you know, there might be some situations where you don't want to fail. You just want to wait and retry forever. So that's mm -hmm. what this does. And it's going to look exactly the same as the last demo which uh, retried 20 times because we knew that was enough. Now we're not specifying 20. We're just retrying until it actually succeeds. Okay. Yeah, a little bit different. And you and might then not... you could you could add into that code that asks the user, do you want to keep retrying? Sure. I mean, it's cancelable, right? The user yeah, sure. might we not want to wait forever. Right. We have a cancellation token. Yep. Okay. So at any time, you know, they can press the button that fires that cancellation. Right. So the next one, this is an interesting one, and this is all code. It's a wait and retry with an exponential back off. And I think this is as close to prescriptive as we get. This is a really good way to do wait and retry. And the whole idea is that every time through the retry, we change the number of, you know, seconds or whatever to uh, we we inc we exponentially increment the timeout is what I'm saying. So the sure. first time it's 200 milliseconds, then it's 400 milliseconds, then it's 800 milliseconds, et cetera, right? And so this is all just done with a little bit of code. Mm -hmm. And so we're, um, this is a wait and retry. And I think we have a maximum number of six retries here. But, you know, you could do a wait and retry forever with an incremental back off. But you can see how it slows down. 200, 400, 800, 1600. The idea being that this thing's not responsive. So rather than just nag, 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 you yeah. start slowing down. Because if it hasn't come back in 800, it's not going to come back in 900. Correct. That, that's the theme there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So this is a really good strategy. But yep. you can also combine this with other things like a circuit breaker which i think is the next thing that we're talking about yeah so this circuit breaker is what i've what i was talking about um before with the sort of the i love lucy lucy and ethel kind of handling the strawberries that are coming down the yeah. uh, <laughs> chocolate covered strawberries are coming down the conveyor belt and they're coming too yeah. fast and they're throwing them over there you know, what are they doing with all this request? So the idea is that when you have a downstream service that's struggling for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, um, Azure, AWS, whatever, might have rebooted or there's like a problem with your service or, hey, maybe your credit card expired and they decided to shut it off on you. <laughs> I don't know what it was, right? There's some problem with that service. So if all these other services start hammering that service, it, it amounts to a denial of service attack. They'll never recover, right? right? So rather than continuing to send, even with a timeout, even with an exponential timeout, um, you can break the circuit. And what that means is that when the circuit is open, no calls go through. But remember, this is happening at the policy level, right? So it's not going to fail to the client, but it is going to just wait uh, and you basically tell it how many, how long it needs to wait before it uh, closes the circuit again, and and so that's what happens. Now it gets a little more complex demo wise, but but it's a very very powerful tool, the circuit breaker, and and it's a well known pattern too. Um, mm -hmm. So if you think about it, we've got this is an, a great example of nesting policies. So we've got a wait and retry policy, right? that waits uh, 200 milliseconds and then uh, keeps retrying. And then we have a circuit breaker policy and we're gonna break if the action fails four times in a row. And that's what this four here is, right? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna wait three seconds after that. And then we're going to try, um, we're gonna do a test run and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, we're going to keep the circuit open. And if it does work, we're going to close the circuit and allow, allow everything to go through. Now, this is a different metaphor than database connections, which are exactly opposite. When a database connection is open, you can use it. When it's closed, you can't. When right. a circuit is closed, 
that means electricity is running through it right. and it works. When a circuit is open, that's like a circuit breaker. There's no, there's nothing going through it. So it's a little bit of a different metaphor. Okay. But you get the idea. So now look at this. In our try catch, we have our wait and retry policy execute. And then inside that, we have the circuit breaker policy execute. Mm. So they're nested. And yes, we will, I'll show you how to clean this up in a minute. But that's the whole idea is that you can nest these policies, right? From cool. outside to inside. So watch this. This and it's again, we're gonna get some different colors here, but I'll explain what happens. All right, so that's enough. We can just look at we can just look at what happens here. So the first three work okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have our wait and retry policy, too many requests. Mm -hmm. And after three seconds, the circuit breaker kicks in and says breaking the circuit. I'm sorry, four. After f this is one, two, three, four. This is the you know the power of async with console applications. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so after four, it says logging, you know, breaking the circuit for three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. And then we get these exceptions that fail. And then the next one, it's called a half open circuit. We're trying. We're making a trial. Yeah. And then that call worked. We're closing the circuit again and everything works. So during this whole time during this time here, mm -hmm. we are not sending any requests through. Right. Even though the the try the wait and retry is trying to resend, yeah, but it's cool. but we're not allowing them through. That is cool. And of mm -hmm. course, for your particular app and your particular scenario, you can play around with the actual policies and how many times you want to retry and how long you want to wait. Exactly. And, you know, based on the application based on, you know, user preferences, really, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. It'd be an interesting, it be an interesting way to do it. You can ask people, well, how long do you want to sit there twiddling your thumbs before we give up? And the cool part is there's a way that you can update those variables in, uh, you know, while the application is running. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, because there's a configuration store that you can just change and, and it will populate. So you don't have cool. to stop the application just to change the policy. Right. That is All right. So cool. the next one is I told you we would clean this up, right? So yep. this is a, a method, a, well, a, a thing called a policy wrap. And policy wrap is a part of poly where we have our two policies. This is exactly the same as the last one, our wait and retry policy and our circuit breaker policy. But now we're using a policy wrap. We're saying poly policy.wrap async. Here's the outer policy yeah, and here's okay. the inner policy. Okay, cool. And now instead of having these nested, we just call policy wrap execute. Right. Async. Got it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Very so cool. the result is exactly the same as the last demo. It's just cleaner code. It's cleaner code. It's easier to read. Perfect. Think if you have three nested. Ooh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who wants, who wants to Yo, debug who that? <laughs> All right, junior programmer, you get to debug that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we've got a wrap with three, a wait and retry, a circuit breaker, and we've got a fallback. And a fallback policy is sort of like the last resort. That's when you throw up your hands and say, I'm done. Uh, you know, this didn't work. Uh, we're finally going to report an exception to the user. But we mm -hmm. want to do that in nice in a nice way. We want to control the message that goes to the user, rather than you know whatever our uh, our, our infrastructure service gives us an error. Okay. We want to tell the user nicely that this failed, and uh, you know sorry. Try back in an hour. Didn't whatever. Work. Nobody knows why. Didn't work, right? So everything works, but you see the fallback catches failed with. Let me see. The circuit is now open and not allowing calls. And then the response is, please try again later. And you can substitute whatever message you want here. Mm -hmm. So that's what the fallback okay. is. And let me just show this real quick. So here's our wait and retry. Here's our circuit breaker. And now here's our fallback policy. Okay. Which we're handling a broken circuit exception. Ah, and I got it. And we're saying, you know, please try again later. 
Mm -hmm. that we substituted that message. Right. And then uh, essentially we have a, uh, a fallback for any exception. So we have four, a fallback for circuit breaker and a fallback for any exception, which yeah. is just, yep. you know, right? So now get this. We have two wraps. We have a wrap that wraps a wrap. There's <laughs> the resilience strategy, which is wait and retry and circuit breaker. Okay. And then we have another one that wraps fallback for circuit breaker with is there any is there any limit to the number of wrappings you can do? No. Cool. Nope. So we have the fallback for any exception wrapping, fallback for circuit breaker, wrapping my resilient strategy, which is these two. Mm -hmm. So there's essentially five policies going on here. Wow. And then you know, when we have the um we use the policy wrap just like before in one mm -hmm. very cool. cool stuff yeah so i mean there's more to it how much time do we have um we well we're about 15 so we should probably wrap up at this point all right so um, all i want to tell people is that these two demos right here bulkhead isolation i just want to explain what that is so a bulkhead on an ocean liner you know, let's not use the Titanic as an example because it didn't have bulkheads or maybe it did, but I don't know. Um, modern ocean liners separate their hull into compartments. So think of them like sealed off rooms. And if it was just one big hull, if they hit an iceberg or got a torpedo anywhere mm -hmm. in the hull, the whole ship would sink. Right. But if they're cordoned off into these sections, you know, one section might get it filled up with water, but it wouldn't sink the whole ship. So that's the metaphor. The metaphor is if you've got um, a service which is calling two downstream services and one of those services goes down, you don't want that to affect the other service. And how it can is that all the resources are going to retrying this service that's mm -hmm. down. And then this service that's actually not down is, be, is, is a victim of that because you're using all these server resources for this guy, and this one gets none of them. Okay. So so that's what that demo does, and, and you can explore that in the samples on your own time. Think of it sort of like multi-threading, but, uh, but you know, in the context of a service call. And right. it's a lot easier than multi-threading. So it seems like Poly is very easy to use and extremely powerful. So I, I think in a nutshell, it gives us the ability to handle these transient errors when a service is failing and do something way more useful to the user than just show a spinning circle while everybody waits for the service to come back. Is that is that a good summary of what it is? That is probably the best summary I've ever heard. I mean, that's awesome. essentially what you want to do. You don't want to just let failures happen, especially, you know, when you were in the, in the middle of uh, service to service communication and something happens with service A, you're, nobody's there to press the retry button. You know, you right. have to... You have to account for those things. And the other thing that I didn't mention is that the whole idea of the chaos monkey, right? The Netflix mm -hmm. chaos monkey is built in to Poly. So there's, an, there's another set of, uh, there's another project that you can use with Poly that will, uh, it's called Simeon <laughs> chaos <laughs> monkey that you can use to do random delays and failures and just to test out the resiliency of your of your system. So it's it's right. like a complete package. It's really good stuff. Awesome. All right. So thanks so much for coming on and, and showing this to us. We'll have links to all the demos and uh, the repo where you can get it. Uh, highly recommend everybody start playing around with this. It's This is really cool stuff. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.